The first game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead, and we're off in week two. Fielded right around the eight. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. 12 yards on the gain. A great start for this offense. Here's one of the longest tenured members of the Super Bowl champs, Tyler Higby, making the first down. Seventh year as a starter for L.A. Just a stable presence for the Rams at the tight end spot with a dash of dynamic plays along the way. One of those starters who may be overlooked, but a key part of why they won the Lombardi Trophy. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Well, the Rams had 0-1 on the year following the loss in the opener. And listen, they knew last week they were in for a tough fight on the road, but now here's the home opener and a chance to get things right. And I like the way that you presented that because the bottom line is they didn't come out of that loss discouraged. They just came home and said, hey, if we do what we're supposed to do, protect our home turf, we'll be just fine. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, this defense for the Falcons, terrific last week in the season opening victory. And how'd you like to be the quarterback reviewing the game tape from last week and seeing this defense on the spot? on almost every snap. If the ball was in the air, they took it away. If the ball was popped free, they picked it up. Five takeaways in last week's game. On third down, here's Williams. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. An early message that this secondary is going to be tested because even though it fell incomplete, it almost felt like a warning shot to get things going. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. A.J. Terrell, the one who shot in there to drop the QB. Well, they were trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow and developing. Yeah, too slow and developing and well-read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback. When he's got no blocking in front of him, his guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball at the turf at your running back's feet. They snap it to Stafford. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. It's Eric Harris who picks it. Pass the 20. And he takes this one back into... Well, CD, these two teams barely off the buses, and this defense already has a sack, and now the interception and the pick six to take the lead. Partner, you have to think that this was part of their game plan coming in because they wanted to embrace an aggressive mindset and attack on defense. They were trying to force that quick miscue, and I would say that their plan worked to perfection. This is taken just shy of the 10. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Ready. 
Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Stafford. Open man, Higby, the tight end. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the dart ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. And pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes his forward for about six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford rolling to his right. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Fake to Akers, here's Stafford. And that is incomplete. Nice progress down the field, was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Going right back to Akers. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Here we go on fourth. Stafford sliding out of the pocket. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Very good starting field position for the Falcons' offense as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Falcons. Deshaun Jackson, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Koo able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Fields this way up at the 17. And pretty good field position here. He's out of bounds right at the 35. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. 
And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. You give the sack to Lorenzo Carter. Well, that's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener. Adds a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. Back to throw. Stafford. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Normally, I'd say this will lead to a punt attempt, but this offense already shown in the first half that they'll go for it on fourth down. Oh, they should have already said, punt it, punt it. Head coach have already made that decision. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Cordero Patterson deep for Atlanta. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their 38. He starts with a give to Akers. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain? Or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Second down, they'll go with Akers again. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Now Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he's going to get this down near the 25. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Cam Akers, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Rams are back within a score. Now Stafford will come up, try to get his guys a two-point conversion. They'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Tough there. Good pass. Hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere. Seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Taking in at the three. 
takes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. Well, they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He gets it complete to Jackson. Touchdown, Falcons. Able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Coup for the extra point. He knocks it through, and he extends the lead to 21-8. Following the touchdown, here's Coup to kick off. A short kick taken at the 18. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Stafford going to give this to Akers. The 71 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. From the gun, here's Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Just as he let that go, and now it's third down. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Here's Stafford. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. Then he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Off a of play action, here's Stafford. This is caught by Robinson. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out. 
down in this one. They needed that score, but they'll have to hold at least for the time being. You're exactly right. Points that they had to have. As you said, they have to regroup now and see if they can get them another way. The final shot before the break, Stanford. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a thing. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? And how about this right out of the locker room? An onside kick attempt. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. A very interesting call and one that backfires. I know they're losing Charles, but boy, to start the second half with the onside kick, risky. Felt like a sense of urgency from their side, coupled with, you and I both know the special teams coordinators, they sell their key plays each and every week to the head coach, don't they? And I guarantee he's been selling this one. We can get it, coach. We can get it. And that came together with that sense of urgency you talked about. Second half will start with a run by Patterson. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. The last run got six, now second and four. Right, right. On play action, they'll throw. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. First and 10, it's Patterson. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Second down at seven. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got a man. It's Patterson complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. They'll need five on this play to move this. On third down, here's Henderson. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Daryl Henderson taking it in from 11 yards out as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Ritter will throw for it. Oh, batted at the line and intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. It's interesting that when it comes to two-point conversions, even heavy run teams tend to throw the ball in these situations. In this case, this one was intercepted. Yeah, they weren't fooled. They were ready for the pass, picked it off. Fields this way up at the 17. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll go with Akers here up the middle. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. 
He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. This one swung out to Williams. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 87 yards for him on the ground now. As he I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. I know it was a game. But you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. That's caught left side. It's Higby, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. Give him six yards in the first down. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. Play action, Stafford. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. To throw on second and six, Stafford. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And the Rams are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover it before he gets going? It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. He'll get down close to the goal line, but not in, as he'll be marked down at the one. Second and goal from the one. Akers again, and he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Cam Akers with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. The Rams leave the offense on the field. They'll go for two. 
Stafford's going to try and throw for it. Out to, oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there. Fourth and three. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down. They just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Fourth down, Mariota. On the move to his left. Now he'll square up and throw deep left sideline. And that's caught inside the 30. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. Now this offense really looking polished these first couple of weeks. Here's first and 10. Now the rookie fifth round pick. This is Tyler Algier. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And this is caught for a first out of the season. All coming in this game and the Falcons are on their way to a 2-0 start the Falcons are going to leave the offense out there they'll go for two they'll try and run it up the middle and he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion and they were able to do it and how many teams shy away from running the football in the two-point conversion they treat two yards as if it were 20. if you're a good team running the ball go to your strength go ahead and push it into the end zone yeah they did it worked and he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll leave them with a third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, Stafford flush to his right. Akers back-to-back -back catches. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45.
Now a first down throw. Stafford eluding the pressure right. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Again, it's Stafford. This one to the left to Higby. And he's out of bounds. Third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Stafford on third down. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. That'll be caught. It's come. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 27-yard line. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Stafford looks to throw again. He'll dump this off to Akers. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Throwing again on second down. Stafford connecting with Cup here on the out route. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion good for seven there. And now two yards to go on third down. Here's Stafford. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to need a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons' offense at the line. And they've got to be feeling very comfortable and confident. He's got a man. Come 